Hello, and welcome to today's Your Author Program. Uh, author Program, sorry. <laughs> My name is Alicia Rodriguez, bilingual outreach librarian from the Engagement and Outreach Department. And I'm here with my colleague, uh, Angie Garcia, also from the Engagement and uh, Outreach Department of the Los Angeles Public Library. It is our pleasure to host the Your Author Series today. Please be free to use the chat box to communicate your thoughts, comments, and questions throughout the program. Also, don't forget to email ecdept at lapl.org to be entered into the opportunity drawing to win a copy of Waiting for a Biblia Puro that John Parra illustrated. In today's Your Author, your author artist John Parra will be discussing his illustrations in Waiting for Biblio Burro. John's work has garnered numerous awards, including three Pura Belpre Award honors, two Golden Kite Awards, and a Christopher's Award. His commercial clients include National Geographic, PBS, and Boston's Children's Hospital. Raised in Santa Barbara, John and his wife currently live in Queens, New York. We want to thank our generous donors, the Lenore S. and Bernard A. Greenberg Fund, and the Library Foundation for helping us bring these amazing author and illustrator programs. Thank you. Thank you so much, John, for taking the time to be here with us. It's wonderful to have you here and to get to know more about you and your creative process of your work bringing to life the illustrations in the book, Waiting for Biblio Burro. And I know you have something special for us. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Can you see me? Yes, hey, we guys. can see you. How are you guys doing today? Hello. All right. Well, Great I'm uh, visiting you guys all the way from New York uh, City uh, in Queens, New York. And uh, it's a privilege to be here today to be speaking with the Los Angeles Public Library because um, I grew up in Southern California and uh, the library is one of my favorite places to go to. And today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about my background. Uh, I am, again, a children's book illustrator and artist, and uh, a lot of people ask me, well, John, how did you become an artist? How did you become an illustrator? And so a little bit of today's presentation is going to be a little bit about that story. It started way back many years ago, and um, we're also going to be reading a, a book. I, they, I know they mentioned it's called Waiting for the Biblio Borro, and so hopefully you'll like that story and enjoy it. And as a bonus, we're also going to be doing some drawing, some drawing, uh, some sketching here. I got my sketch pad ready. So maybe you guys have some pencils and markers at home. If not, get them ready. Um, so we're going to do a little drawing exercise that I like to do uh, to kind of warm up and do artwork. And then uh, at the very end, we're going to have some questions and answers. Uh, so hopefully you'll have some good ones for me. And um, so why don't we just go ahead and begin? All right. So I'm going to share with you uh, my screen right now. Uh, here we go and talk a little bit. Uh, play start. Okay, so um, we're gonna go all the way back to the early years, um, and here we are. Here, here I am. That's me uh, when I was a little baby. And yes, I was born with a potato as a head. Um, I had a big, large head, and people used to tease me. My brothers, especially, they used to call me Moon Face, Potato Head. Um, but that's okay. Uh, it kind of worked out in the, in the end because it gave me lots of brains, right? Um, so where I grew up, I grew up in Southern California. And the first place we lived was in Santa Barbara, California. And where we lived, we had 50 avocado trees. My dad planted 50 avocado trees, and that's me next to one of them. So we used to eat avocados and guacamole all the time for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner. And I kind of come from a multicultural background. Uh, my father is Mexican and my mother is American. And uh, my father was a landscape contractor uh, for many, many years. And my mother was a school teacher and educator uh, for many years as well. And um, when I was growing up, some of the early influences that we had, we used to love going to the, the Natural History Museum. Does anybody know what kind of bones these are? Um, I'll give you a hint. It's not dinosaur bones. They are anybody whale bones. These are whale bones uh, in front of the Santa Barbara Natural History Museum. Uh, favorite place of mine. Um, also, we used to love going to the uh, Museum of Art and we were young and uh, full of energy, but my mom insisted also on taking us there. Uh, and it really, really influenced us as a, as a young, uh, young boy seeing the, the artwork there. 
And of course, living in Southern California, especially Santa Barbara, it's such a beautiful area. Um, and you sort of develop this love for the outdoors and for nature. And uh, we spent a lot of time at the beach and also camping up in the mountains. And of course they have a lot of public art uh, going on in Santa Barbara. This is a festival that they ha have every year uh, at the Mission. And it's a street painting festival where artists from all over the world come and paint right on the sidewalks there. Uh, these beautiful, beautiful murals. And every year we celebrated uh, with a festival uh, called Fiesta, uh, celebrating our Latino uh, heritage in the city. And there was music and there was food and dancing. And um, I think I even got to be in the parade one year. Now, when I was young, you might recognize some of these books. So when I was young, these were also some of the books that I loved. And some of these might be your favorites as well. Um, the Little House, Curious George, Charlotte's Web. These were all stories that I got to read uh, at the local library. And because I loved looking at picture books, I started to draw um, from those books. So this was kind of inspired by the little house that I, I used to do. And it's a, I, I thought I'd do a drawing of my house uh, when I was a kid. So this is about first kindergarten, first grade, not too bad, not too shabby. But um, because picture books, when you, when you, the wonderful thing about picture books is when you read them, you see them, you start imagining, you look, you look, you get to see the artwork, you see how beautiful they are, and it inspired me to be creative. And because I love to do art, my parents loved, knew that I love to do art, so they always bought me markers and pens on my birthday. So they really encouraged me. So if you like to do anything with art or with uh, uh, music or with writing stories, make sure your parents know. Um, because it was a big help for me to have their support. Um, now I started drawing and drawing a little bit more and more. And what do you want to do? If you want to get better at something, what do you have to do? You have to practice, right? So this is what I started drawing. I started drawing more and more and I started doing landscapes. And I started doing robots and anime characters. And then I did some more landscapes and images. I just was always doodling, always drawing but always practicing, trying to get better. And because I love to draw art so much, there were teachers at my school that knew that I love to do art. And um, if it wasn't for their help, they really supported and encouraged me to continue moving forward with art. So if you, again, if you like to do art or play music or write stories or do drama or what it is that you're Create of that. Make sure your teachers know because without some of their help that I have had for my teachers, I wouldn't be where I am today. All right. So here are my some of my children's books. Maybe you've seen a few of these. Uh, so all these books up here are books that I've illustrated, and I usually work with an author um, who's written a story. And today I'm going to share with you a very special story called. Waiting for the Biblio Burro. Are you guys ready? Okay, let's begin. Waiting for the Biblio Burro by Monica Brown, illustrations by John Potter. And the story I should say about the Biblio Burro uh, is about a real life person. And uh, so don't be surprised if you, you know, see him on TV or one or them talking about him because he's a real life person from Colombia. So just a little backstory. Okay, here we go. Waiting for the Biblioboto. On a hill behind a tree, there is a house. In the house, there is a bed. And on the bed, there is a little girl named Anna, fast asleep, dreaming about the world outside and beyond the hill. When Anna wakes up to the roosters, kitty, 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 Poppy is already at work on the farm, and Mommy is busy in the garden. Anna bathes her little brother and feeds the goats and collects the eggs to sell at the market. After breakfast, Anna and her mother walk down the hill. Anna closes her eyes against the sun and wishes she was back in the cool of the house with her libro, her book. Oh, I think I missed the page here. All right. So Anna has only one book. Let me see if I can find this to read. 
Anna has read her book, her only book, so many times, she knows it by heart. The book was a gift from her teacher for working so hard on her reading and writing. But last fall, her teacher moved far away, and now there is no one to teach Anna and the other children in her village. So at night, on her bed in the house on the hill, Anna makes up her own cuentos and tells the story to her little brother to help him fall asleep. She tells him stories about make-believe creatures that live in the forest and the mountains and the sea. She wishes for new stories to read, but her teacher with her books has gone. One morning, Anna wakes up to the sound of tuck a clip clap and a loud ee ee when Anna looks down below her house, she sees a man with a sign that reads Biblio Burro. With the man, there are two burros. What are they carrying? Libros, books. Anna runs down the hill to the man with the sign and the burros and the books. Other children run to him too, skipping down hills and stomping through fields. Another one. Who are you? Who are they, the children ask. The man says, I am a librarian, a bibliotecario, and these are my burros, Alpha and Beto. Welcome to the biblioboro, my biblioteca. But Senor Ana says, I thought libraries were only in big cities and buildings. Not this one, says the librarian. This is a moving library. Then he spreads out his books and invites the children to join him under a tree. Once upon a time, the librarian begins, sharing the story of an elephant who swings from a spider's web. He reads from books with beautiful pictures, then helps the little ones learn their ABCs. He sings A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Finally, he says, now it's your turn. Pick out books, and in a few weeks, I will be back to collect them and bring you new ones. Me too, Asana? Especially you, says the librarian with a smile. So many cuentos. While Alpha and Pedro chomp the sweet grass under the tree, Anna picks up book after book and finds pink dolphins and blue butterflies, castles and fairies, talking lions and magic carpets. Someone should write a story about your burros, Anna tells the librarian rubbing Alpha's nose and feeding more grass to Beto. Why don't you, he asks. Then he packs up the books and is off. Enjoy, he calls to the children. I will be back. Anna runs up the hill to her house, hugging the books to her chest. She can't wait to share her books with her brother. And that night she reads until she can't keep her eyes open any longer. Each morning, Anna does her chores and reads and looks out her window. She listens for the sounds of Alpha and Beto, but weeks pass and the librarian doesn't return. When will he come back, she asks her mother, who smiles and says, go read, Anna. When will he come back, she asks her mother, who smiles and says, go draw, Anna. When will he come back, she asks her mother, who smiles and says, go write, Anna. When will he come back, she asks her mother, who finally says, go to bed, Anna. One night, Anna dreams she is flying over her country on a butterfly's back. In her dream, she crosses mountains and oceans and rivers and jungles, bringing stories everywhere she goes. Stories fly from her mouth and fingers like magic, falling into the hands of the children waiting below. When Anna wakes up, she misses Alpha and Beto and the Biblioboto's books. She remembers that the librarian told her that she could write a book. And so with paper and string and colored pencils, she does. Finally, just when Anna thinks she'll never see the Biblioboto again, she wakes up to hey -ya, hey -ya, and children yelling. She runs down the hill with her library books and a special surprise of her very own. I wrote this cuento for you, she said. Que bueno, the librarian says. And then he reads her story. 
to the children under the tree. When it's time to go, Anna's book is packed carefully on the burro's back, ready to be carried away over the hills and through the fields to another child who is asleep on a bed, in a house, on a hill behind a tree, dreaming of Alpha and Beto and all the new stories the Biblioboto will bring. Thank you very much. And that is the end. Okay. So as I mentioned earlier, the Biblioboto was based on a real life person named Luis Soriano from Colombia. And when I work on children's books, I have to do a lot of research when I'm working on them. So I look at not only the people that are in the books, especially if it's about a real person, but also the landscapes and the plants, and sometimes even the bugs and the insects and butterflies and what they wore, such as a hat. And those are all parts of the process of making a children's book. And here are some of the sketches from, from the book that I had, a couple ideas you might wanna like, you might not have seen. Now, I have a question. How long do you think it takes for me to make one children's books? I'll give you a hint, it's more than a week, it's more than a month, it's more than three months. It takes me about six to eight months to finish one children's book. So by the time you're starting like third grade, by the time I finish a book, it's like you're going ready for summer vacation. Um, so it takes a long time for me to, to get all the work done. But I love it. Um, many people ask me about my ideas and inspirations. Well, first begins with, I love books. I love looking at lots and lots and lots of books. So I have a collection in my home, uh, lots of books about art. Um, I also love art that's called folk art. And you will find folk art all over the world, but I especially love folk art from Mexico and from here in the United States and um, a couple other places. I'm also influenced by murals. Uh, this is an artist named Frank Romero, a very famous artist from the Los Angeles area who's done wonderful murals there. And I'm also influenced by some of my pets. This is my pet, Lily. Can you guys say hi, Lily? She wants to be an Avenger. She's got her little super cape on there. I'm also influenced by my family. My family is a big supporter of what I do and who I am. And they always kind of show up in my books as well. And of course, food, because food is delicious. So whether it's flan or tamales or other good things. A few years ago, I even had a chance to work on a very special project for the United States Post Office and created six forever stamps for them. And it had to do with Latino food and, of course, artwork. So that was a really fun project. So where I start, where I like to work is my studio and my home. So if you wanna draw and be an artist, make sure you have a spot in your house, maybe it's on your desk, uh, where you have your paints or your markers or your pencils and your paper all ready to go. So you can just jump in your chair and start being creative. So that's what, kind of what I have, a special room just dedicated to being art. And I also have lots of pictures, the things that inspire me in there. So I can be very creative and think creatively. And it all starts with my little sketchbook. I start drawing. And sometimes the doodle is just a little drawing that is kind of funny, but something about that drawing I kind of like. And then I'll take that drawing and then I'll kind of expand on it. So that little couple became the couple in the top right corner. And I draw more around it and come up with a story idea behind it. And then maybe I do like a little color composition to see what kind of colors of paints I'm gonna use. And maybe even do a painting composition and then finally it becomes a final painting. So I break everything down into steps because sometimes when we work on projects, they become they can feel like they're overwhelming or they're too much. So what you always want to do is just say, well, I don't have to do the whole thing. Let me just do one part of it. And then the next day, well, I'm going to do another little part of it. So I break everything down piece by piece. And because I love to do art, I get to be friends with other artists, and other uh, writers and illustrators, which is my favorite part of this job. Uh, so this, here's some of my friends, and here are some of the books that they've done. I highly recommend them. Um, they're really wonderful, by the way. Um, so I still get to go to museums 
I still love going to listening to music and to libraries now that I'm older. And I still love going to the Natural History Museum. And this is my granddaughter, Sophie. Can we say hi, Sophie? Excellent. And so that's the end of the presentation part of the pause. Okay, so here we go. So thank you for listening to that part. I uh, hope it was okay for you guys. Uh, right now, we're going to do a little bit of a drawing exercise. So get ready. Get your pens out. I got my markers right here. I got some things to go. And, you know, we're just going to do some exercise on how I sort of do a warm-up. And this warm-up doesn't have to be, you know, super sophisticated or, or, you know, like a tightly drawn, you know, thing. We're just kind of like getting the creative juices flowing. So what I usually do is I do like a lot of faces. Um, and I'll start kind of drawing with a, a circle. Like I'll just kind of draw the circle, the head, kind of like a potato shaped head, right? Can you guys all see that? So like this. So right about in the middle. So if you draw kind of like an oval shaped base, like this, right about in the middle is actually where your eyes are. You know, so if you kind of like imagine an imaginary line right around here, and I'm gonna kind of create like these little walnut eyes, kind of like little walnuts right there, right in the middle. this and like this like that so can you guys see that so it's like this like that and let's get a different color for the eyes and then again I'm just gonna add the circles for the eyes right in the middle here this here we go show the characters so that's pretty where the eyes go so the next one we're gonna do is where the nose is and the nose is gonna come about Mm, just about here, I wouldn't say halfway between the eyes and the chin, but about a third of the, at least a third of the way down. I kind of mark it right there, and I'm just going to kind of my, draw my little stylized nose right there like this. Like that. It's got a funny, kind of a funny nose. And then um, we're going to do the mouth. So the mouth can be kind of like two parts. One is kind of like the upper lip and then the bottom lip. So I'll do like an upper lip, and the upper lip is like kind of like a, a B that's lying on its back. So like like the letter B, not like a, a bumblebee. Like a, and then the bottom lip is just sort of like a one big, like a big U sort of watermelon shape. Like this, right here, like that. So I put the little lip there. And um, so now we're going to put in, so I know this is kind of where the, the layout, some of the features are. So once I got those features in, I know the ears are at the top of the ears will end at the top. Oh, no, wait, I gotta put the eyebrows in. Why not? We'll do that in a second. So, at the top of the ears, kind of are at the top of the eyes. So, I know this is gonna be where the top of the ear is. And then the, and the bottom of the ear is gonna be where the bottom of the nose is, which is about right here. So, this is kind of like how I know where to place things. And I'm just gonna put like an ear here, and I'll do the same for the other side. And put a little ear. About there. And I think this guy needs a little bit more hair, right? So we're going to add some eyebrows, you know, and you can just kind of make your own kind of creative choices with this. Just going to add them in. Like that. And I'm going to have him maybe put a little more of a smile. He looks a little too serious to me. Yeah, there we go. Kind of like a kind of a funny off smile and now we're gonna add in his hair so the hair starts about again right about I would say about right in the middle up here forehead and kind of do this and we can kind of give him some nice you know add the add whatever hairstyle you like he can be kind of like a you know a big big poofy hair or you can do curly hair or long straight hair I kind of like just doing, you know, it's a warm up just to give you an idea of some characters. Like this. Like that. So now he's looking more sophisticated, right? Looks very professional. All right. And then after this, let's see, should I give him like a mustache or something like that? A little bit of a. Little mustache or big mustache? Little mustache? No, it has to be a big mustache, right? Big, big, long mustache. Maybe like Salvador Dali. 
I'll give him a little curly cue there. So give him some personality, right? So that's when you start thinking, you can start being creative. What kind of person is this that I'm drawing here? What kind of creativity can I make this person? You know, who is this person? And then I go like that. And then, you know, you can kind of add a neck and you know, and you continue drawing more and more and you can continue drawing the body. This is like the bottom of the shirt right here. Oh, lost a marker. There we go. So we can do. So what I like to do is I like to draw many, 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 many circles or ovals and just do lots and lots of faces and lots of faces and keep going and keep repeating and seeing how much I can do uh, and how creative I can be. Like some of the characters can be, you know, like pirates and go, Arr! or some of these characters can be, you know, like very straight or, or you know, you can do, you know, you know, like girl, ladies, and 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 people with big hats, or or different things like that. So that's the wonderful thing about just kind of warming up and getting ideas uh, to being creative. So I'm just gonna add this little shirt in here, like this. And I'm just gonna put a little. Uh, I can't resist. L.A. Dodgers. Let's go put a little L.A. there. So, again, you know, you can get, uh, you can get kind of creative with your, with your, with your characters and with your drawing. And sometimes, you know, some of the stuff, you know, you draw, you're just like, well, it looks okay, but uh, I probably won't keep it, you know, and that's, that's okay, too. Uh, but some of the stuff that you're going to draw, you're going to go, you know what? That's not bad. And you got to hang on to those things and maybe have like a scrapbook or something like that. You can you can start putting all your drawings in and things like that. And um, let's see. So that's kind of like where I, I kind of like to do my, my characters. Yes. You know, real loose though, just real loose, real fast, warm up exercise. Should it be more than like 10 minutes, 10 minutes you wanna work on that. So if you can try to do that, and you just do a whole bunch of faces and a whole bunch of, you, you fill the whole page with all those characters. Um, and you can just kind of keep doing those those kind of exercises to kind of keep, get you started. So that's, um, so that's part of my uh, presentation uh, for it. Um, so far and um so i'm gonna open it up now to any questions that you guys may have Hope, how are we doing on time we're doing okay my yeah, we're, yeah we're good we just want to show you our drawings so i have my oh drawings. we got some drawings <laughs> that's what i love to see i love it um i was trying to draw myself um but i think i'm gonna stick to librarianship no, that looks wonderful. I love it. Like I said, it's 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 a warm up. It's a fun. It's a silly exercise. It's not to be. You can you can hide it somewhere if you don't. If you're not. If you're embarrassed by it, but it's just for fun. And it's again, it's like okay. So now I'm like thinking creatively because it's like it's like drawing is like a muscle that you exercise. You have to kind of work at it and work at it and and build it stronger and but when you're exercising you have to also warm up so you don't like pull a muscle or something like that so mm -hmm. that's uh that's what we're kind of doing with the, the, the these silly sketches and things like that so i hope you guys can try it out at home um or wherever you're at and and have some fun with it and maybe you guys can send it in and we can you know take a look and see them uh, all right all right so now um, do we have some questions or, or any that anybody wants to ask me from, um, yeah, I did see a couple of questions. Um, so we did have someone ask if your artwork has ever become, or has ever been used as a jigsaw puzzle? <laughs> maybe, maybe that a became, new opportunity. That became really popular, I think, during the COVID times, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I haven't, they haven't yet. I haven't, I haven't uh, done it or just, nobody's asked me yet about it, but I was thinking about it the other day, actually. I was like, oh, this, that would be kind of fun to, to have it like that. And I think that would be kind of good because they're quite detailed, uh, some of the paintings, you know, that I've done. And I think they'd be, they'd be really good as jigsaw puzzles. So hit me up if you know any jigsaw puzzle makers. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
did you want to ask any other one or well because you mentioned how detailed your um your drawings are do you ever hide like special details or things in your drawings that you know we we would want to go back and look through your illustrations i i do um i i hide all kinds of things and it sort of depends on the book too um what i put in them and um but uh definitely in every single book i hide a um a like a painting of myself as a little boy. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not telling you where, where so <laughs> find it out. Um, so that's kind of one of the Easter eggs, but there are other Easter eggs. Like one of my brothers get my, the book, uh, see my books for the first time. They go through it and they know all the little details. Mm -hmm. and go, oh, this is this and this is this. And, and what about this? So it's, it's kind of fun. I like making it about family and closeness. And I think if you approach art in that way and having it, you know, make it fun and make it interesting uh, for yourself, you know, others will find it fun and interesting. And, and I think that's part of the joy of making art. So whatever you, whatever creativity you want to add to your art that you like, you know, go ahead, add it in, add it in. Don't feel embarrassed. It doesn't have to be serious. Sometimes I like when I was young, Oh, you have to be a serious artist. It's like, well, that's true. And then and, and some people are, but, but also there's a part of me that just wants to enjoy um, enjoy it and make it enjoyable for other people well, because I'm having so much fun doing it. So, yeah. um, I know you spoke about your, your area that you work in. Um, I wanted to know, and, and you mentioned your sketchbook, but I want to know what other mediums you use. Um, well, other than drawing, I do a lot of drawing. Um, I work mainly in acrylic paint on illustration board. So I still work old school like that mm -hmm. um, when I'm doing picture books or posters. And then what happens, I'll scan everything in and sometimes I'll adjust things in the computer, uh, Photoshop things and, um, you know, to try to improve things if, if something's not quite reading the way I want it to. But um, as you can see behind me, I have uh, many of the original pictures. Uh, from my past children's books, mm -hmm. um, I, even including there's one up there in the corner. Uh, this one is from Waiting for the Biblioboro. It's the last page. Um, and I'm very proud of that um, painting book. There are some paintings that I I hang on to because they're very sentimental. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like I can't, I can't part with them. It's, it's, a, it's a funny thing. It's like you're, they're your children, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. they're, they're very... Um, they, they, they mean a lot, you know, to you. And so for a few, I hang on to. The rest, I, I, I try to be a little bit open-minded about. Well, um, I see another question. Um, oh, where'd it go? Um, Juanita was asking, how do you choose the authors that you work with? Um, That's a very good question, uh, Juanita. Um, what happens is uh, the publisher, because I usually work with publishers, and uh, sometimes when I work on a book, I don't even talk to the authors at all, which is oh. like, kind of a funny thing to think about. It's like, wow, you don't talk to the authors when you start when you're doing illustrating a book. Um, yeah, it's like I, so. What happens is an author will sell their story to a company like a publisher. And then the publisher contacts me and they'll send me the story and say, John, we got this great story for you. Would you like to work on it? And depending on my schedule and depending on, um, you know, the interest level, it's uh, I, I then um, I say, yes, I, I love this story. This is a wonderful story. I would love to work on it. And so that's kind of where it begins. Um, so and then there's some authors I've worked with uh, a few times. Um, such as the uh, uh, Round is the tor Tortilla, uh, Green is the Chili Pepper series with uh, Roseanne greenfield Thong. Um, with Monica Brown, we've worked on three books. In fact, my very first book was with uh, Monica Brown um, with a book called uh, My Name is Gabriela. And it was about a poet from Chile who won the Nobel Prize for her poetry. Yeah, and she was an educator. So sometimes you know the author and you get to work with them again, which is always fun because it's like working with your friends. And uh, sometimes it's a new person you're working with, and those are fun because it's like you're you're like learning their their story and the way they write, and it's it's always a it's really a fun experience. Um, I will say that though my next book is a, is different from all my other books because uh, I actually wrote and illustrated this one. So I did the whole process. I wrote the story. 
um, we did the editing and then uh, it's getting ready to be published next May uh, next year. So excited about that. And it's called Growing an Artist. Well, I'm sure we're going to have it at LAPL. So really exciting <laughs> to wait for it. Um, uh, Ellie, do you want to do, I think I see a question from Julie. Maybe you can tackle that one. Um, I don't see There's it. Oh, one below. How, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Julie asks, how do you figure out the feeling and style for your illustrations to match the author's vision? Well, you know, I don't really know if I do match the author's vision sometimes. Uh, that's a good question, you know, because they're probably thinking of something else uh, visually. You know, yeah, did you ever, when you ever read a book, right, don't you start seeing pictures in your mind? And I'm pretty sure everybody that reads, even if it's the same book, they're probably going to see pictures in their mind, but they're probably all going to be different than your idea. And I think that's what happens with art. So I try to do the best uh, complementary version of artwork that I can to make the story better as best I can. And I, I have many tools. I usually pick a color palette that I kind of stay within. So I pick only certain colors. I said, John, you're just going to use this red or this green and this blue and this yellow and this orange and that's it. You can't use anything else. So it, it kind of like also ties everything together very nicely. It keeps everything, you know, so like even in each page, I'll have other colors dominate and alternate and you have this really nice rhythm and flow because like a, a picture book is kind of like a movie or a film you know it has a flow to it and you're, you're really watching a, like a story in your head unfold and so you kind of have this this kind of wonderful but you don't want to keep it the same all the time it, it should kind of be but also but but still connected so that's why i choose certain colors to keep everything kind of connected and everything kind of grounded Well, with that in mind, um, is there someone you think about um, when you're drawing or you're illustrating or like, is there a specific target audience or a person um, that kind of helps your motivation? Oh, uh, well, I mean, it, uh, well, the first person I think is my granddaughter. <laughs> uh, she's eight right now. So, and she actually comes over and she, she, she sees me painting and she says, uh, I can help you paint, you know, and, and she comes <laughs> over and we, we, I, I kind of mask things off on the painting. And we paint together, and she's actually painted on some of the books. And uh, we haven't figured out the royalties yet, so. But, uh, <laughs> we won't tell her. <laughs> we won't tell her yet. <laughs> she's older. But uh, no, I mean, you know, it's just I, I, I paint for, you know, I, I again, I, I keep thinking of my family. I keep thinking of my, um, my kids and students that I've met over my life that I've been fortunate enough to speak to. I think of them and. You know what? And also when I was a kid, you know, what did I like? What, how did I how did I feel about picture books and, and think about those things? So I kind of internalize a lot of different ideas. Um, I also want my, my picture books to be interesting for adults uh, as well. I want I want adults to look at the books and say, hey, this is this is really good. This is interesting because a lot of times that the adults are reading to or, you know, the older teens are reading to younger kids and I don't want to to be boring for them as either. So there's a whole balance that you have to go through when you're thinking about these things. There's another question from Diane. How do you feel when you, how did you feel when you were awarded the Pura Bel Pre award, uh, honors? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. It's a, it's a huge honor. It's just, yeah, there's no words to describe it. It's so amazing to be among such you know, incredible, um you know recipients for one it's such a, a beautiful wonderful history and um being welcomed into that is it's got to be one of the highlights of my career for sure um it just it's it, it's transcendent when you when you when you feel it it's it's amazing and it's just a, a gratitude <sighs> yeah you just feel so grateful and um positive and thankful and I think those are the, the feelings that you go through when you're when you when you go through it, and, and it's and it's fun and it's fun. Um, the last the last one was um, I attended was in New Orleans, and you know you you have a special dinner, and the I mean it, it's not just about the awards, also it's about the people there and the people that you meet and that that are connected with it. That you you make these such amazing connections. I'm so lucky to be a part of this 
this this wonderful kid lit librarians, teachers, educators, creatives. It's such a, a incredible um blessing to be a part of and I, I think it's just fun to be in and uh so to me it's 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 an honor for sure um so i guess um uh, one of the other questions is and and you kind of already touched on this but can you mm -hmm. share any words of wisdom um for any of the young creative minds that are on the on the program today um, what's your, your advice that, um, you may have received when you were younger or that you wish you would have received? <laughs> I, well, again, I, I did touch a little bit of things. So just to kind of recap, you know, you do have to practice it, uh, you, to get better. So make sure to practice, you know, if you, and, and have fun at it, you want to make sure you're enjoying what you're doing and having fun and staying interested. Um, also reading lots of books helped me a lot because again, when you read books, you're thinking, you know, creatively, you're always picturing that what's, what are you reading in, in your mind is a visual thing. And because I was such a strong visual learner growing up, um, I sort of gravitated toward that. So definitely books are wonderful, but also a lot of things are, are can be inspiring, you know, maybe a piece of music that you like to listen to, or you're inspired by your, your family or your pets. Uh, you could be drawing your dog or your cats or, or, or things like that. Or maybe it, maybe it was a trip that your family took. Uh, or maybe it was food, mm, delicious food, can resist. So be inspired, be inspired by what's around you and what makes you happy. I think that's when I really started to enjoy my art because I was studying art for so many years. But when I really started to enjoy my art, it was because what I, what I really love and what I really like in this world, you know, and what really means what is really important to you. So if you find the things that are really important to you, you know, make that your art too. So. Um, we have another question <laughs> from pa uh, Patty Patricia Valdovinos. Which page was your favorite to illustrate in Biblio Burro? Ah, uh, that was the uh, the butterfly page, I think. Let's see where she's flying over the mountains. That in the the mountain scene. Oh, that with the tree. This one, I think this one here. I really like this page. You guys can see that where Anna is flying over the countryside. Just. It just has like that dream-like connection, but everybody can relate to it, you know, flying in a dream and, and being inspired. So that one, uh, this one's also a very special one, I think. Um, I think one of my good friends, uh, artist Rafael Lopez, has the original for, for this painting in his, in his house. Um, see, it's good to know other artists, right? It's fun. Um, and, uh, and I, and I kind of also like this page too, so where she's telling the story Oh, she's telling the story to her little brother about all these uh, creatures that live in the mountains and forests, kind of like that, and these giant, giant flowers in the tree. So that was kind of a fun one to do. So, but the there are different pages mean different things to me. So, you know. um, let's check to see if we have any more questions coming in. So we do have another segment called This and That. Um, and before our time wraps up, um, I think we want to try doing that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Ali, you want to start? Yes. So it's kind of like a rapid fire, you know, this or that question kind of thing. <laughs> so burro or bicycle? Uh, bicycle. <laughs> okay. So artist or illustrator? Oh, gosh. <laughs> artist. <laughs> salsa verde or salsa roja? Uh, salsa verde. Okay. Green pan dulce. <laughs> pan dulce or pie. Pan dulce or flan. What about flan? Oh, okay, flan. <laughs> Tea or coffee. Uh, uh, coffee. Um, vacation or staycation. Vacation. Would you rather be able to eat anything you wanted, or be able to predict the future? Oh, and eat anything I wanted, of course. All right, so how about this? Would you rather walk on the moon or be able to walk around um, barefoot anywhere you went? Uh, I like the barefoot thing. I, I think I, I, like, I would enjoy it. Would you rather never be able to drink coffee or never be able to drink water? 
Oh man, that's a tough one. Uh, I guess I'd have to give up coffee because water's too important. <laughs> Um, and then the final question, um, would you rather eat the same thing every single day or listen to the same song every single day? <laughs> maybe, <laughs> I, uh, maybe I'll eat the same thing every single day because songs might annoy me after a while. <laughs> Even if it might be my favorite song. Yay. Thank you for playing. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. Thank you. <laughs> I like that. That's like something my brother said I would do. <laughs> well, I, I was going to, because I know you grew up in the West Coast and then you moved to the East Coast. So I was going to ask you if you did a liquor store or a bodega, because <laughs> that's the thing between folks. <laughs> like how, um, oh, what I, I, I had no idea. The, the bodegas are out here for sure. Liquor stores. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. So we wanted to ask which which one do you use still you know <laughs> which oh, one which term do you I, use? I guess i you know i i probably use the terminology bodega out here just so people understand me yeah um but if i'm back <laughs> on the west coast i won't use bodega i'll use liquor store <laughs> you know because people go like what are you talking about yeah. <laughs> and we have one more question from eddie vera he's asking what is your favorite color palette Ah, well, let's see. Um, I usually do complementary colors. So uh, red and green are a big one. Um, you know, I always use black and white in some extent and also browns and things like that. But like the, 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 the bright colors, red and green is a popular one. Blue and orange also. I love using those. Uh, you'll find those in a lot of my books. And um, I'm not a big yellow and purple guy. I know I'm going to get a lot of you know, <laughs> talk about it, but... Uh, Yellow is okay. Purple. I don't know why purple is just doesn't move me. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody out there. I love purple. <laughs> but no, uh, I think because everybody asks me, what's your favorite color? It's always green. So mm. my green is red. So I love that. Very cool. All right. Um, so <laughs> let me double check. No more last questions. No more other suggestions for this or that. Um, so thank you so much, John, for um, spending some time with us today. Um, it was great to hear you read to us and our drawing class. It was amazing. Um, well, you guys did great. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to practice some more before I, I consider a, a career change, but yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, thank you so much. Um, and then make sure everyone um, to continue to read um, or, I'm sorry, excuse me. Uh, to, to read more of the books that John has illustrated, please make sure to stop by at lapl.org. Um, we have more. Um, and then also in the banner, we're seeing here um, that if you email ectdept at lapl.org, you can enter a raffle to win a copy of Waiting for Bibio Puro. Um, and also, so join us next week for the July 30th um, for the Tina of LA Film Festival. Um, it will be at 3 p.m. just um, um, on this channel. Um, and then next, um, in two weeks from now, um, join us on August 6th as we um, talk and chat with Alex Gino um, as a, uh, an author and activist who will discuss her book, um, Rick. Um, and then a couple more announcements before we wrap up. Um, we hope that you have all joined the summer reading challenge, but if you haven't, there is still time. You can go to lapl.org slash summer to register. There's also an easy and free to use app, um, BeanSec, that you can use to register. Um, and then just, this is what our um, game board looks like. It's um, really fun and to be able to complete. John, if you were here on the West Coast, I'm sure you would um, partake. Uh, um, and also uh, another one of our initiatives this summer, um, if you're looking for something um, fun to do um, on the great outdoors, please make sure to join our LA Bio Blitz challenge. Um, we need your help to photograph and share your observations of wild species, animals, plants, and insects on an app called iNaturalist. Your participation will help our city's efforts in protecting wildlife and their habitats. Um, and you can begin today by going on to our website, lapl.org slash bioblitz, or pick up a game card at an open 
PL branch. Um, and then I just wanted to show everyone. I'm a I'm a bad YouTuber, y'all. I can't. I I need to figure out my my camera angle angles. But this is what the LA Bio Blitz um challenge um uh flyer looks like, and it has great um pictures. Um, but yes, uh, stop by one of our branches or definitely go online. Um, and yes, we look forward to your contributions. Um, and last but not least, thank you all for attending our virtual Your Author program. And we can't wait to see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you, John. Thank, thank you, you guys. Thank you.